Good morning and welcome to the Daily Post on this 30th of December. We've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope and believe will be helpful and uplifting for you through this day. We begin with the scripture from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you're reading the Bible in a year, we're getting close to the end. Zechariah chapters 13 and 14 and Revelation chapter 21. Thoughts of the day. Funny how a $20 note can look so big when you take it to church. The best government teaches us to govern ourselves. Moral indignation is jealousy with a halo. The motivational thought for the day, make your life a mission, not an intermission. And on this day in 1703, Tokyo was struck by an earthquake and about 37,000 people died. In 1880, the Boers, B-O-E-R-S in South Africa, under Stephanus Kruger, declared the Transvaal in Southern Africa to be a republic. In 1922, Russian officially, Russia officially becomes the United Soviet Socialist Republics, the USSR. And in 1924 on this day, astronomer Edwin Hubble formally announced the existence of other galactic systems at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. In 1932, on this day, in Britain, the completion of the electrification of the London to Brighton railway line. And in 1990, Albanian Jews were given permission to leave the country and emigrate to Israel on this day. In 1993, on this day, Israel and the Vatican agreed to establish full diplomatic ties seeking to end the 2,000 years of painful relations between followers of different religions. <clears throat> and in 1995 on this day, the lowest temperature ever recorded in the, U in the UK, sorry, United Kingdom, occurred on this day. The personal story of the day, a light in the darkness. Do you feel as if you're burning out in your service to the Lord? You may want to supply spiritual light to your dark world till the end of your life, but you wonder if you can. You won't burn out if you understand and apply the truth of Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. The prophet in that uh, scripture saw two olive trees that supplied oil to a bowl that fed seven lamps on a golden lampstand. As we think about the reality behind this symbolism, we can be encouraged. You and I are not the source of light that enlightens the world. We can only receive the oil of the Holy Spirit that fuels the living flame that He produces. If we burn steadily through the long, dark hours, it is because we have learned to yield ourselves and our lives to the Spirit's unlimited supply of power and strength. This comes only through continual fellowship with the works of Christ. It needs to be said again and again. It is not what we do for the Lord, but what He does through us that enlightens and enriches others. We must be satisfied to be a bright and shining lamp, drawing from a hidden resource in the indwelling spirit of Jesus Christ. Our role is to help others see the glory of his light. And we must remember daily that every demand placed upon us is a demand placed upon him. The most obvious point to understand is that not only do others see the light we shine, but we actually live in it. Praise the Lord. Wise words to be taken on board. The devotional thoughts of the day. We're still working on Job. And in this first thought, Job is accused once again. 
a scripture from Hosea chapter 6 and verse 6, references from Job chapter 34 verses 1 to 37. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Perhaps you've heard a story like Deborah Johnson's. After an accident on the job forced her out of work, she battled for nearly five years to get her workers' compensation claim settled. When it was finally paid, she found out that her medical bills would not be covered. It was like pouring salt on wounds. And that's likely what Job felt. Although Elihu claims to have something new to say, in reality he continues very much like Job's friends who were speaking earlier, insisting that God is just to punish evildoers. Like those earlier speakers, Elihu missed the fact that Job has never denied this. Thus, right when Job might have hoped for comfort, he received insult on top of injury. Elihu claims that Job drinks scorn like water. In other words, he thinks Job should be counted among the wicked. Now Elihu is right to question Job's claim of complete innocence. As we have seen, there's an element of pride in Job's protestations, as he himself will come to realise. Elihu would be right to challenge Job's claim that it profits a person nothing to please God, as he says in verse 9. Except Job never claimed that. Instead, Job pointed out that calamity falls upon both the righteous and the wicked. See chapter 9, verses 22 and 24. <clears throat> and that the wicked do prosper in this life. Chapter 21, verses 7 to 13. And we've all seen that happen. Much of what Elihu says is perfectly correct. God cannot do evil. In verse 12, he is so intimately involved in the world that if he withdrew, his life-giving spirit or would collapse. See verse 15. And because nothing truly escapes God's notice, see verses 21 to 30, Job is wrong to suggest that God overlooks evil. So some right, some wrong, but still painful for Job. Uh, again, uh, wise thoughts and things and learnings to be found in the book of Job. Second thought again, we're moving on through the book of Ruth. Under God's wings. The scripture from Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. <clears throat> Birds use their wings for many purposes other than flying. In times of danger, a mother bird's wings provide a feathered canopy of protection. When darkness falls and the temperature drops, it is under their mother's wings that young chicks find the warmth that they need to make it through the frosty night. As rain plummets to the earth, these same wings provide dry shelter. For those who are young and vulnerable, the wings of their mother promise the safety and security that they need. This is the safety and security that Boaz alluded to as he assured Ruth that her kind and unselfish deeds would not go unrewarded. When she abandoned the security of her homeland to care for her mother-in-law Naomi, Ruth may have wondered about her future. She had left everything that spelled safety but she found something even greater, a refuge that exists only under the wings of the God of Israel. The word translated refuge means to flee to protection. Under the shelter of God's wings, Ruth found the protection that she needed. God never abandons his own. In times of danger and distress, he spreads his wings of protection and comfort over us. Protected by his wings, we do not need to fear the difficult circumstances of life. Personal storms may rage around us, but we are safe under the canopy of God's constant care. 
The psalmist in Psalm 91 and verse 4 assures us, quote, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. If you are going through painful times, nestle yourself under his wings. Take comfort in the fact that God's protection is spread over you. Nothing can touch your life without his express permission. Nothing can threaten you without his express protection. God's protection is more than a match for our problems. Wonderful reassurance. Praise the Lord. The facts of the day. Kermit the Frog has 11 points on the collar around his neck. One day on the planet Pluto is about the length of a week on Earth. And the closing thought, Lord, help me to do what I can, and in the doing, find new confidence for larger responsibilities. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with us. We hope that uh, you find the Daily Post today uplifting and helpful, and that you'll come back and uh, get some more help and uplifting tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.